please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will never miss any video from Acure Life Science Foundation. Myself, Dr. Shantanu R. Joshi, a clinician, a pharmacologist and a drug researcher. Dear all, today we are going to talk about Tell Me Sartan. Tell Me Sartan is a very widely used anti-hypertensive medication. It is from the group Angiotensin Receptor Blockers. This group is popularly known as ARBs. What is this ARB? What is this angiotensin? What is this? Tell me, sorry. To understand all this, we need to understand a system known as RAS. Renin angiotensin aldosterone system. It starts with the reduced blood supply to the kidney. Whenever there is reduced blood supply to the kidney, that is what we call ischemic kidney. A kidney secretes a substance known as renin. This renin stimulates the liver and converts angio tensinogen from the liver to angiotensin 1. Angiotensinogen is present in the liver. Renin stimulates the conversion of this angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. This angiotensin 1 is an inactive substance. It do not have any pharmacological action. But in the lungs, this angiotensin 1 get converted into angiotensin 2. This angiotensin 2 is a very important molecule. It plays a very crucial role in the development of hypertension. The conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2 is governed by an enzyme known as angiotensin converting enzyme. It is present in the lungs. Now starting from initial, we get renin, we get renin from the kidney. It will stimulate the liver, it will stimulate the conversion of angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 in the liver. This angiotensin 1 will get converted into angiotensin 2 in the lungs with the help of angiotensin converting enzyme. Now we are having angiotensin 2. This angiotensin 2 act at different places starting with the peripheral blood vessels it will act through one receptor known as angiotensin one type of receptors in the periphery in the peripheral blood vessels this angiotensin one type of receptors are present and where this angiotensin 2 is going to act this angiotensin 2 which is going to act on angiotensin 1 type of receptors in the peripheral blood vessel will bring about the constriction of the peripheral blood vessels. When the peripheral blood vessels get constricted, the total peripheral resistance, the total peripheral arterial resistance will increase. As the TPR rises, both the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure rises. To understand the concept of this systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure, 
प्लीज रेफर टू माई वीडियो ऑन अवर यूट्यूब चैनल एक्यूअर लाइफ साइंस फाउंडेशन इट्स फ्री एनी वन कैन असेस टू इट नाउ दिस एंजियोट इंसिन सेकेंड विच वॉज एक्टिंग ऑन द ब्लड वेसल्स एंड प्रोड्यूसिंग राइज इन दी प्रोड्यूसिंग द वैजो कंस्ट्रिक्शन एंड राइज इन द टी पी आर अल्टीमेटली अफेक्ट द सिस्टोलिक एंड डायस्टोलिक ब्लड प्रेशर बोथ सिस्टोलिक एंड डायस्टोलिक ब्लड प्रेशर विल इंक्रीज द सेम एंजियोट इंसिन सेक एक्ट ऑन द एडनल कॉर्टेक्स द एडनल कॉर्टेक्स सिक्रेट्स अल्डोस्टेरॉन Aldosterone is principally a mineral corticoid, and being a mineral corticoid, it has natural tendency of retention of sodium and water. When the sodium and water will be retained in the body, the volume of the blood rises. As the volume of the blood rises, cardiac output will increase. and when cardiac output will increase it will give rise to rise in the systolic blood pressure there will be rise in the systolic blood pressure now the same angiotensin second increases the adh secretion from the posterior pituitary anti diuretic hormone this anti diuretic hormone is also having the similar effect it also retains sodium and water volume of the blood rises cardiac output increases again systolic blood pressure rises the same angiotensin second act on the thyrus center in the brain it increases the thirst therefore the individual will take more water when the individual will take more water volume of the blood will rise again the cardiac output will increase and systolic blood pressure will rise to summarize all this angiotensin second act on the peripheral blood vessel rises the systolic and diastolic blood pressure angiotensin second act on the adrenal cortex to secrete aldosterone and increases the retention of sodium and water angiotensin second act on the posterior pituitary increases the ads secretion and retains sodium and water rises the volume of the blood and increases the systolic blood pressure and same angiotensin second act on the brain the thirst center in the brain it rises the thirst sensation the individual will take more water volume of the blood again rises and again cardiac output increases cardiac output increases and ultimately the systolic blood pressure will increase this is the role of angiotensin second one more thing i must add in renin angiotensin aldosterone system and that is related with the effect of stress and effect of adrenaline dear students in stress there is stimulation to the adrenal medulla and body secretes more adrenaline adrenaline works through beta 1 beta 2 and alpha receptors out of which beta 1 receptors are present on dextra glomerular cells of kidney i am repeating due to stress there is over production or more production of adrenaline adrenaline act on beta 1 receptors present in the dextra glomerular cells of kidney and stimulates the production of renin stress adrenaline beta 1 receptors on dextra glomerular cells of the kidney production of renin increases and the whole ras system comes into play ultimately stress is indirectly involved in the production of hypertension through ras system tell me sartain blocks these at1 receptors on which 
angiotensin second is going to act naturally the actions of angiotensin second will be blocked and ultimately you will get reduction in the blood pressure if you go in detail if you block the actions of angiotensin second in the peripheral blood vessels there will be decrease in the total peripheral resistance by dilating the peripheral blood vessels when the peripheral blood vessels are dilated total peripheral resistance reduces there will be reduction in the systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure when we block the receptors of AT1 in the adrenal cortex there will be reduction in the aldosterone secretion when aldosterone secretion is low naturally there will be no retention of sodium and water rather there will be loss of sodium and water by the kidney volume of the blood reduces cardiac output reduces there will be reduction in the systolic blood pressure if you block the receptors of AT1 in the uh, posterior pituitary it will reduce the ADH secretion again there will be loss of sodium and water when there is loss of sodium and water volume of the blood decreases cardiac output decreases systolic blood pressure will decrease when we block the AT1 receptors in the thirst center in the brain the patient the person will not have much thirst the water intake will be limited volume of the blood will not expand cardiac output will not increase and it will not contribute to the systolic blood pressure or one can say that a systolic blood pressure will decrease this is how talmisartan blocks the AT1 receptors in the peripheral blood vessels in the adrenal cortex in the posterior pituitary and on the thirst center all actions of angiotensin second will be blocked by talmisartan and because of all this there will be reduction in the systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure this is how talmisartan acts up to this point we have seen the common properties how that arbs work going to the details of this talmisartan talmisartan is orally effective the action starts just after taking the drug say in 10 minutes the maximum action of the drug will be observed within within three hours will continue the action for more than 24 hours and that's why the doses of talmisartan are always once in a day once given talmisartan works for 24 hours this is what we call round the clock production is observed with talmisartan it is used in the dose of 40 milligrams and 80 milligrams for some adjustments along with the other drugs 20 milligram or even 10 milligram can be used but it is always in combination the drug is metabolized in the liver it is excreted in the bile and that's why one should remember that if the patient is suffering from some hepatic disease like hepatitis or anything related with the liver is there you either use some other drugs or you need to reduce the dose of telmisartan as telmisartan is not degraded not excreted by the kidneys renal fell liver is not a contraindication for the use of telmisartan telmisartan is strictly contraindicated during pregnancy its phytopathic potential is well established renal fell liver and renal agenesis are observed in the treated mothers if we go in details of it the common side effects are just weakness headache gastrointestinal upset actually in most of the cases telmisartan is generally well tolerated 
with very few side effects just I told you about. First dose hypotension and hyperkalemia can be seen but it is seen in very minority of the cases. It is not a major problem with the use of the drug. But still one should be cautious if you are using telmisartan in a patient who is using potassium sparing diuretics or patient is taking some potassium supplement. Now the common side effect which is there with the AC inhibitors that is dry cough that is not seen with telmisartan because dry cough is due to bradykinin. AC which converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. The same angiotensin converting enzyme used for the degradation of bradykinin. In case of AC inhibitors we block angiotensin converting enzyme it stops the conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. The same inhibition of angiotensin converting enzyme will stop the degradation of bradykinin. Bradykinin is little irritant and that's why the bradykinin inside the lungs will produce the dry cough as a side effect of AC inhibitors. ARBs do not stop the conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2 but only blocks 81 receptor of angiotensin 2 and that's why dry cough which is a common problem with the patients of AC inhibitor is not observed, it's generally not observed with telmisartan. Now uses of telmisartan. Telmisartan is a very important first line drug in the management of hypertension. This is the primary indication for this telmisartan. Then telmisartan is used in the patients of congestive cardiac failure. This is a very common drug prescribed after the acute myocardial infarction. It is a very safe drug to be used in diabetic nephropathy, hypertension nephropathy or nephropathy of any other origin. With the years of research, it is observed with the AC inhibitors and ARBs that these drugs have capacity to reverse the left ventricular hypertrophy which is a common complication of hypertension. They are also capacity to re-establish the elastic properties of the peripheral blood vessels. In long run, if the drugs are able to partially restore the elastic properties of the peripheral blood vessels, it will certainly reduce the blood pressure in long term as well as it will reduce the chances of atherosclerosis. And that's why these drugs are very important so far long term management of hypertension is concerned. These drugs are having some important advantages. This telmisartan is having important advantage over some other antihypertensive drugs. Some which one should note are that do not affect the lipid profile negatively as beta blockers may affect the lipid profile negatively. So that is the benefit of telmisartan. Telmisartan do not alter the carbohydrate metabolism. The carbohydrate metabolism may be affected by the diuretic, use of the diuretics, use of the beta blockers. They interfere with the metabolism of carbohydrates. Telmisartan do not alter the metabolism of carbohydrate and that's why it can be safely used in diabetes. It is very safe during the nephropathy. Telmisartan is safe during nephropathy. 
it do not affect the general well-being of an individual, especially a young individual. It do not affect the sexual function of a male person. Beta blockers do affect the general well-being. Beta blockers do affect the sexual performance. Overall quality of life is affected by beta blockers. Such effect is not observed much with telmisartan. The withdrawal symptoms which are very common with beta blocker especially the palpitation and sudden rise in the blood pressure which are common with the beta blockers are less observed or not observed, less observed with telmisartan. And this is how this telmisartan is a first line drug today to be used for hypertension. Dear all, this video is only for understanding of mechanism of action of telmisartan. Here I have explained you the mechanism, the effect, side effect and so many things about this telmisartan but one must not take telmisartan of its own, of his or her own. It's a prescription only drug and you need to visit your physician, he will decide whether this drug is suitable for you or not. We at Acure Life Science Foundation strongly condemn self-medication. This video is for the medical students and the patients who are interested in understanding the mechanism of action of telmisartan. This video is not for any, any, any self-medication. Your doctor is the only choice who will decide whether you need this medication or not. We strongly condemn self-medication. Dear all, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe so that you will never miss any video from Acure Life Science Foundation Pune. Thank you.